Hey everybody, this is George from DinosaurGeorge.com. All right. Israel from Brockton, Massachusetts says, Hi DG, I hope this question makes the cut. Hey Israel, <laughs> congratulations buddy, it did. Do you know Israel, yours was one of the ones that made the cut out of 4,800 questions. Uh, I don't know if it's luck or what it is, but if you play the lottery, go out today and buy yourself a ticket, buddy. <laughs> he says, uh, if dinosaurs like Tyrannosaurus and Allosaurus were alive today, how would, uh, how would they react? Uh, well, I guess react to us. Um, first of all, we would not be able to share an environment with those guys. They're just too big, too powerful, too deadly. Um, we couldn't share the environment with them, unfortunately. If they were still alive, we would have built enormous zoos, sort of like, oh, I don't know, maybe a movie called Jurassic Park. Yeah, you know what? I may make a movie about that. I'll call it Jurassic Park. It will be awesome. Yeah, maybe somebody's already done it. Anyway, uh, <laughs> um, they would uh, see us as a food source. I believe they would see us as a food source and they would not be timid and shy about being around us. And so I think the way they would act uh, or react to us would simply be, hey man, Either give me dinner or you're going to be dinner. Um, so that's that's what I believe. All right, Amber from Casterville, Texas. Hello, Amber. How are things in Casterville? Um, I grew up in Hondo, right outside of Casterville, and my mother's from Casterville, Texas. So I love your community. Uh, how do you know how old the dinosaurs are? Amber, good question. If you mean how long ago they lived, that the way we, we think we know that is based on the age of the rocks in the formations where we find their bones. But if you're asking how old they are like in people years, that's a little bit tougher. There are different ways to determine whether a dinosaur is an adult or a baby uh, or juvenile. We, we know that. But uh, once you get past that, it's a little difficult to know. Uh, I've seen estimates that Tyrannosaurus rex may have lived into maybe its mid to late 30s. Uh, raptors may have burned out through their life by the age of 20. That may be as long as they could live, maybe even shorter than that. And some people theorize that the giant sauropods may have lived to be as old as 300 years old. Um, the problem with that, Amber, is that we just don't have a definitive way of knowing. So we kind of sort of have to make a guess. Now, if we can find their driver's license with the skeleton, then we know how old they are because the birth date is always on the driver's license. So if you were a Tyrannosaurus Rex and you had your your driver's license, we would, if you had your driver's license, um, okay, we don't know how old they are, Amber. <laughs> All right, Alex from Toronto, Canada. My name is Alex and I am 13 years old. Alex, pleasure to hear from you, buddy. My question is, did Albertosaurus hunt with Despletosaurus? You know, those two dinosaurs lived together, same time, same place, Alex. And this is where uh, nature is so incredibly cool. They're two gigantic predators living at the same time in the same place. Rather than fight over a food source, it kind of looks like their body designs were a little different from each other so that they could hunt something different. It appears that Albertosaurus is better suited for hunting things like the Hadrosaurs, the duckbill dinosaurs. And Despletosaurus may have been better suited for hunting uh, the Ceratopsians. Now, certainly either would prey on the other animal if they had the opportunity. But by dividing up the, the food that's available to you, it allows two giants to share an environment without necessarily competing head on. I don't think they would have uh, hunted together and I think they would have seen each other as absolute rivals and they probably would have tried to kill each other if they had the chance. But I think Albertosaurus was faster so he could get away quicker and I think Despletosaurus was heavier so he could win the fight if they ever fought. But instead of fighting, I think these animals divided up the food source and said, I'll have duckbills for dinner, you have ceratopsians, and that's how I think they survive. Okay, my buddy Mohammed from Tigard, Oregon. Is it possible for bats to evolve into something like future predators from the British sci-fi show Primeval? Well, yes, anything is possible when it comes to that stuff, Mohammed. Um, certainly, we may see gigantic bats in the future. Uh, bats are very um, uh, efficient hunters, and it's not unusual for them to grow. I mean, if you've ever seen the size of a fruit bat, that creeps you out. Um, certainly some of the other bats may attain that size. Who knows what the future holds for us? I think it's kind of exciting to think that in maybe 10,000 years from now, people will be looking at animals that would have been completely foreign to you and I. Uh, and the people looking at them then might wonder, I wonder what this thing used to look like. So yeah, I do think it's possible that they could certainly change and size 
is something that's quite plausible. Getting bigger, we've seen that in the fossil record over time and time again. Some animals grow to gigantic size because gigantism can be a, a very effective way of becoming the top predator or at least being so big the top predator doesn't mess with you. So maybe we'll one day see gigantic bats. When they echolocate, it would be so loud it would knock you over. Wouldn't that be nuts? <laughs> All right, finally, James from Bourne, England. Hello, this is James from Facebook. James, nice to hear from you, buddy. Uh, for any of you that are not signed up to follow me on Facebook, you need to uh, become one of my friends. We have a lot of fun on Facebook. James, nice to hear from you, buddy. I'm a big fan of yours and deeply respect you. You know what, James? I appreciate that very much. I, I really do. I appreciate the respect. Uh, and I certainly, um, I certainly respect you for taking the time to write to me. I appreciate it very much. Would you mind if, if uh, would you mind if you answered my questions? Not at all, James. That's why I'm here. First, what level of thinking were the smartest dinosaurs capable of? Well, uh, the smartest dinosaurs probably were the raptors, and certainly Truodon rates right up there as being one of the smartest. But when you look at their brain size, uh, their brain size is still not enormous. So I would probably suggest that they were probably as, as smart as a modern cat, maybe not that smart, but pretty close, and probably as clever as, say, things like wolves and coyotes and foxes. And I use the word clever because wolves, coyotes, and foxes are incredibly intelligent. I don't think dinosaurs had that same level of intellect, but I do think they were as clever, meaning focused on what they needed to focus on. They knew exactly what to do to be able to survive it or to kill who they were hunting. So I think they had just enough brain power to make them certainly the most successful animals in Earth's history. Secondly, uh, what got you into dinosaurs? Thanks in advance. Well, James, you're welcome in advance. Um, here's what got me into dinosaurs. When I was little, I was probably three years old. Um, my mother took me to the Smithsonian Institute in Washington and I can still remember, and, and I'll tell you, it's as clear as a bell to me, I can still remember this overwhelming feeling of being stunned and amazed by these skeletons. And I liked, I liked them so much that when the time came for all my brothers and sisters and my mom to move on to go look at something else, I didn't want to leave the dinosaurs. And I threw a fit and all that did was got me a spanking. So then I did the next best thing as a kid. I kind of started hanging back from the family group. And once my mom turned a corner, I turned around and took off running to go back to look at the dinosaurs. And I ended up getting lost in the Smithsonian Institute. And a nice lady found me and <laughs> took me to a security guard. And uh, he then uh, took me in this little golf cart to the police station. They actually have a police station there. And uh, he took me upstairs and he let me sit on the captain's desk and they let me wear the captain's hat and they give, gave me these little white powdered donuts, which was a big treat for me, and a glass of milk. And I'm sitting there going, that's it, man. Dinosaurs are my love. I've got a captain's hat, I've got white donuts and a glass of milk and everything was going great. And then the elevator came up and the door opened and there was my mother. For any of you that want to know what a Tyrannosaurus Rex looked like, that's what my mom looked like. I, I promise you she had fire coming out of her mouth. She was so mad because I'd wandered off. Well, from that moment on, I knew uh, that I loved dinosaurs and I've never lost my interest throughout that entire time. I'm 48 years old and I still have just as much enthusiasm about them as I did back then. All right, I hope you guys have enthusiasm about dinosaurs and I hope you share it with people around you. Until next time, I am Dinosaur George and write to me anytime you want at dinosaurgeorge.com. And while you're there, sign up to become one of my friends on Facebook and follow me on Twitter. I will see you guys all again soon and remember, for you young people out there, please practice your reading. Good reading skills are very important. And for everybody, continue to use those good manners. It makes the world a whole lot nicer place. I'll see you guys later.